reactions. We gotta do this filming. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Evan Dallager. I work at Millipore Sigma at Jaffrey, Jaffrey, New Hampshire facility, and I'm here to talk to you about a wide array of microscopes that you can find at the Jaffrey Public Library. So, to help provide a better understanding or visualization of how these microscopes are used or by the user, I have a volunteer named Charlotte, and she's going to be looking at a mouse kidney today, which is one of the slides that you can actually get in the big slide case that the Jaffrey Public Library provides for you. So I set it up for her, at least on the lowest objective. I focused it for my eyes, but it's important to note that with each different user, it may not be in focus for them just due to eye differences. So it's very important. So if say, for example, your child's looking at the, at the sample and then you come in and look and it's blurry for you, don't be confused. You can just use the fine focus. That's why it's there to adjust it for your own eyes. So. Don't you? Oh, so the arm is actually adjustable. You see how it's upright? You can actually hold down the stand itself and then pull back on the arm right here. Oh. Yeah, so you can That's angle really it cool. a little bit better for you. Yep, starting on the lowest objective. And be sure that if it's completely black, you can use the mirror on the bottom so that you'd be able to get as much light as possible. Yeah, there you go. It's very pink. Yes, yes it is. So when you think you may have it in focus, you can actually increase the objective when you're ready. So now she's going up in, in uh, magnification. This will actually bring the sample a little bit, not physically, but it will appear a lot closer to you. Now, she notice how she's only using the fine adjustment. She's not using the coarse. If you use the coarse adjustment at, this, at these later stages with these greater, with these larger lenses, you run the risk of actually making contact with the lens itself with the slide and that could lead to damaging the slide, could break the slide and it could also scratch or damage the lens itself, which is a very uh, expensive uh, little mishap. <laughs> so whenever she feels like she has it in focus, she can go to the very last objective, which is the blue one. And this one will provide you with the best image that you can possibly get with these microscopes. It's amazing. And that is how you use a, a, uh, a sunlight compound microscope. So now uh, I'll have Ashlyn and Charlotte looking at a dog tongue, on a sample, a little sample size of a dog tongue underneath the stereoscopic microscope. So use, uh, utilizing the stereoscopic or dissecting micros microscope, it's a little bit easier, a little more user-friendly, my personal favorite, honestly. The only things that you need to really focus on are this adjustment here. There's no fine or coarse adjustment. It's just kind of a standard zoom. And then to get the image that you want, there are two, so it's binocular. There are two lenses, one for each eye. And when you look down, you do not want to be seeing two separate images. You want to be able to move the eyepieces so that it becomes one cohesive image. And once you have that, you can use the zoom and you can inc or get closer to the sample and then provide a great image. So if you will. And remember that you want to see one cohesive image. If you're oh, seeing wow. two, if you're seeing two, you can use the, uh, the eyepieces, they adjust. Now Ashlyn will get a sneak peek at a at a dog's tongue at a cellular level. What does it look like, Ashlyn? It's not like a bunch of like it's hard to explain almost like hairs, but it's like thick hairs. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's sparkling slime. It's like really cool looking actually. And again, you can find the dog's tongue, a house fly, and yeah. a wide variety of others that the Jaffrey Public Library provides to you. There's almost anything that you can think of inside of this inside of this slide box. It's quite amazing. So lastly, I would like to give you guys some things to do at home with these microscopes. Say, for example, you have the stereoscopic or dissecting microscope at home. This one is my personal favorite. You can bring this one outside. You can get a whole bunch of different things like at home in your backyard. You can find, you know, little bugs slash insects. You can 
grab leaves, twigs. And the cool thing about the stereoscopic microscope is that it provides a 3D image. I know we have a slide there now, which is strictly 2D, but the cool thing about this microscope is that because as it's binocular, it has two uh, eyepieces, one for each eye, that provides two different perspectives that, co that converge into one image, kind of just like your actual eyes do. And because of this, it allows for a 3D image to appear that you wouldn't be able to achieve with the compound microscope, which is just strictly 2D. So that being said, if you want to see, say, an ant really close up or you want to see a maple leaf really close up, you can actually do that with this microscope, which is pretty awesome. Secondly, things that you can do at home with the compound microscopes is uh, you're able to... So something that we do in science a lot is document our observations. And something that you can do is go through the big box of slides that you have. You can pick out your favorite ones, whatever it may be. And it's very important to document what your observations so you can draw your favorite slides. And that could be really, really fun.